changes to Azeroth in World of Warcraft Cataclysm are drastic, but is the game better for it? Well, that's what we're in the process of figuring out. But while we're not quite ready to give Blizzard's expansion a score yet, here are our impressions so far. When Deathwing broke out of the ground a few weeks ago, he tore Azeroth a new whirlpool. Huge swaths of both Kalimdor and the Eastern Kingdoms were reforged. The main cities of Orgrimmar and Stormwind have been rebuilt, the world looks wildly different, and the way you progress from low to high level has been largely changed. And in our experience so far, the changes have been great. Right from the start, questing has been streamlined. No longer do you have to cross continents to complete a single quest. Now, quest givers deliver their orders to you in groups and send you to the same location. It's efficient, fun, and rewarding, and the changes are available to you whether you buy Cataclysm or not. This same philosophy also applies to the Cataclysm content. For example, the starting areas of the new races. While the Worgen race provides some serious lore and shows one of the more troubling stories to come out of the Alliance, the Goblins are flat out fun. The first few levels of your life as a goblin centers on your rise to the top as the Trade Prince of Kazan. Along the way you get a sweet pair of wheels, wine and dine some influentials, as well as make sure that if they puke, they puke in a bucket, and witness the natural disaster that causes your entire home city to be evacuated. The goblins have always been very tongue-in-cheek, and Blizzard has gone all out with their opening quest. <laughs> on the other end of the spectrum is the level 80 and upwards content. We've spent most of our time in the underwater zone of Vashir and it is quite spectacular. The zone is detailed and undulates with sea life. Besides the usual killable creatures, the sea floor is littered with animals that are solely there for decoration. The giant set pieces, such as the shelled creature Nespira, provide some good focal points for quest lines, and the layout of the enemies in all three dimensions changes the way you go about exploring the world and completing quests. Bashir is also home to an interesting story technique, in which you live out the past. In this case, you're playing as a Naga and uncovering the history behind the zone through action. Don't expect anything vastly different though, Bashir still uses the tried and true kill and collect quests, albeit much more streamlined than in previous expansions. Finally, we've been trying out Archaeology. Basically a game of hot and cold, a telescope points to where some relic fragments are hidden, and a light next to it tells you how close you are. Red is far, yellow is closer, green is very close. Once you survey the right place, a little note appears and you get some fragments. Pick up enough fragments and you can put together an entire relic. The relics fill in some of the thick World of Warcraft backstory and some rare ones even give you usable items. It's a neat little distraction, but not something you'll want to focus solely on. Flying between dig sites can get pretty tedious as well. There's still a lot more in Cataclysm left to see, and we plan on seeing as much of it as we can before we finish our review. For the latest, keep checking our Cataclysm review page on IGN.com.